A federal judge rules that Fauci is going to be sitting for depositions. He ordered this some time ago, but the government was unhappy. They appealed it to the Supreme Court. They said, Judge, can we reconsider this, please? And Fauci is now ordered a second time. Unless the Court of Appeals comes in and interferes with this stuff, he's going to be sitting for a deposition. And in fact, the deposition is apparently scheduled for November 23rd, coming up right around the corner which is going to be a lot of fun if it happens. But we've got several things to take a look at today in this segment. First, you can see three motions that we're gonna sort of go through relatively quickly. The final order is what we're most concerned with. This is coming out from Judge Doherty. Judge Doherty says, hey, this is what I have decided, but I wanna show you what came in before this was decided. The government requested a partial state. We're gonna go through this quickly. I'm gonna explain why the government said, we can't sit for depositions. It's gonna be a huge problem. The judge already ordered this about two weeks ago, said, no, the depositions are appropriate. We read through all of that in prior videos, but the government responded on top of that and said, it's gonna be a catastrophe. Jen Psaki's on the list, Fauci's on the list, Vivek Murthy's on the list, White House strategic communications people, they're all on the list and they don't want to sit for depots. So the government responded. They said, can we have a partial stay on this? The whole world's gonna die if we allow these people to be questioned because uh, they're probably gonna be found out to be giant liars and we don't want that to happen. And so they submitted that to Judge Doherty. We'll read that. They also submitted what's called a writ of mandamus up to the Court of Appeals in the Fifth Circuit. So they're going to the current judge asking for a stay and they're going to the Court of Appeals asking for a mandamus, which is an order from the higher court to the lower court telling them they can't conduct the depositions. So all of that is happening. Let's start at the top with the government's request for a partial stay. Anthony Fauci, Jen Psaki were ordered to sit for depositions and the government is doing what they can to try to stop those from happening. You see that the defendants in this case, it's Joe Biden and everybody else who is listed in this lawsuit, including Fauci, Vivek Murthy, Jen Psaki, a whole number of other people don't want to sit for depots. And so they filed a motion for a partial stay saying, Judge, can we just put this on hold? We are appealing this to the Court of Appeals, looking for a writ of mandamus, and we're asking you to stop this until we hear from them, right? Don't make us do these depositions. If they come back down and overrule you, then we would have done the depositions for nothing. So let's just put them on hold while the Court of Appeals rules on this thing, shall we? This was submitted, it's 13 pages, submitted on October 27th. I wanna show you how it looks quickly before we take a look at the judge's response. They said the United States plans to file a petition for a writ of mandamus, which they did, because they say we do not want depositions for three people. In particular, Vivek Murthy, Jen Easterly, and Rob Flaherty. As part of the preliminary investigations, they say this court's order would require high-ranking government officials to divert time, including General Murthy, Easterly, and Flaherty, all of that is being challenged in the Fifth Circuit. So they say this petition does not seek relief for Anthony Fauci, Saki, or Elvis Chan. But they do expect that they'll ask for other people. The motion is distinct from a motion for a stay. Okay, so they want Vivek Murthy. It looks like Fauci, they're not even fighting in this mandamus, or at least in this case. They're not even fighting about Fauci. Regardless, they say, regardless, this court has broad discretion to stay the proceedings. Federal defendants will be irreparably harmed absent a stay. And we've talked about that. And they also say that they have a success, likelihood of success on the merits. So right, they're filing all of this with the Court of Appeals. So I, I'd, I'd rather just go over to the Court of Appeals and show you what they're submitting. But they're making the argument here. Yeah, here they're seeking to quash Jen Psaki. So they're, they're sort of going after them for different reasons. Here, defendants expect to move the Eastern District of Virginia to quash the deposition of Jen Psaki. So they're, they're going into different jurisdictions and trying to sort of save different people for different reasons. I want, let's see if there's a, what they're doing with Fauci because I didn't see him uh, here. As discussed, defendants are, are prepared to make alternative witnesses available. Further, defendants don't, are not objecting in, to depots of Fauci. That's interesting. I thought that they would be for sure, but maybe they're not. 
Okay, so let's go over to the writ of mandamus because this is what they're actually relying on. Okay, this is with the United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit. They've got Vivek Murthy, Jen Easterly, Rob Flaherty, all subject of this petition for a writ of mandamus. And so they're asking the lower court, don't let us do the depositions until the higher court makes a ruling on this. And I want we're not going to spend a lot of time on this document because this is 406 pages. This whole thing is 406 pages. It's ridiculous. But now they tell us the federal government respectfully requests that this court issue a writ of mandamus to vacate the lower level court. They don't want depositions for the Surgeon General. They don't want depositions for CISA. They don't want depositions for the White House. The suit was brought by the states, Missouri and Louisiana, saying that there was a conspiracy between the federal government and big tech corporations to censor materials. The government has complied with more than 15,000 pages of documents, and they've made Anthony Fauci available for deposition. But even this deeply flawed threshold must have a limit, they say. And they don't want the federal officials, the actual government officials, to have to testify. They say it would upend the process of resolving civil litigation. And so they move the district court for a stay of the order pending the resolution of the appeal. Right. So the, the rest of this is a, is a big statement. It's a big, big document. As I said, it's about it's over 400 pages. And let me just sort of, you know, sort of scroll through this and show you what is in this puppy. It's a lot. You see, the argument is still here. There's going to be all sorts of appendices. Let's see if we can sort of scroll down and uh, see what, what else we've got here. Yeah, and they're actually looks like they're layering on a bunch of the record. So uh, here, right, filings from 614, filings from, yeah, there's all the filings that apply. So it's a big, massive document, not all that interesting. Where all this is summarized is in this final order. And so I want to sort of fast forward through all of that and get to the final order so we can see what the judge actually ruled. In the case of Missouri versus Joe Biden suing the president for big tech collusion, the federal judge came out on November 2nd, issued the following order. He says, pending before this court is the government's motion. They don't want the depositions to happen. And let me lay out some background before I tell you that the motion for a partial stay is denied. In other words, the depositions are happening. Judge Doherty gives us some background. He says, on May 5th, the government sued the Biden administration. The states sued the federal government is the better way to say that. In the complaint, the states say that Biden colluded and coerced social media companies to suppress disfavored speakers and to label content disinformation, misinformation, malinformation. They say that the Biden administration allowed for the suppression of free speech in violation of the Constitution. They have several examples of how that happened. One, Hunter Biden laptop story lied about. Lab leak theory lied about. Masks lied about. Election integrity lied about, they say. Or, or let's say not lied about, but colluded with. Okay, so they colluded with the big tech platforms on each one of these issues. Speech about election integrity and security, collusion, censorship and suppression, collusion of many people, uh, Jayanta Bhattacharya, Dr. Aaron Kiridi, co-authors of the Barrington Declaration, censored, Jim Hoft, censored, Gateway Pundit, censored, Jill Hines, censored, right? Louisiana, reopen Louisiana, freedom Louisiana, all these people booted. Now, per this court's memorandum, the judge says that the court ordered the government, uh, the Biden administration, to agree to participate in eight depositions as part of this case. But then the government filed a response. They filed the writ of mandamus that I just showed you. They really don't want these depots to take place of Vivek Murthy, Easterly, and Flaherty. They also filed another motion asking for a stay in this case. Now, in this case, the judge lays out the law. He says, I've got broad discretion. I can stay proceedings if I want. Here's how I do it. I ask whether you're going to succeed on the merits. I have to ask myself this, says the judge. Are you going to win if you take this up on appeal? The court followed the correct standard, and he says that as to uh, Surgeon General Murthy, he is a high-ranking official. That's true, but I'm not changing my opinion. He says there were exceptional circumstances, and the deposition is happening. Same thing with CISA Director Jen Easterly. She had firsthand knowledge 
She was the nerve center of the federally directed censorship. She directly flagged misinformation to social media companies. She stated that American and that social media speech allows CISA to police online speech, this woman. And so the court says, yeah, deposition, it's also happening for her. Same story with Rob Flaherty. He has specific knowledge about conversations with Meta and the disinformation doesn't. He was sending emails back and forth. And so the court goes through the various factors and said, accordingly, it is hereby ordered that the federal defendant's motion for a partial stay is denied. So all of those individuals will be sitting for depositions, including Anthony Fauci. Looks like this is his order. Notice a video deposition for Anthony Fauci. He's been ordered by a federal judge to sit for a deposition at the following date and time. It's on November 23rd, 2022, 7 a.m. Eastern time, bright and early, even earlier if he's on the West Coast. But Anthony Fauci is ordered to sit for the deposition. It's going to be taken upon oral examination before a certified court reporter and a videographer. It shall be recorded stenographically and videotaped. The taking of the deposition, if not completed in one day, will take more than one day until it's done. A court reporter will be provided by the plaintiffs, which in this case is the state, and the deposition can be used for any reasons that are applicable under the law. They tell us that the witness is Anthony Fauci. The location, of course, because it's virtual, will be probably a Zoom meeting or something like that, which we do not get access to. But Anthony Fauci ordered to sit for a deposition, and it's going to be interesting to see if anything comes of that. This lawsuit is being brought by Eric Schmidt, the state of Missouri. And of course, we will continue to follow. I hope you join us as we do. Thank you for subscribing wherever it is you are watching us.